Good morning, everybody, and uh, welcome to Facebook Live, and I should say good afternoon to those of you who are joining us on the East Coast. I'm very excited to be here this morning, uh, and I want to tell you a little bit about my guest speaker, Carla Hastings Crossett. Uh, I'm going to be turning over the time to her in just a minute, but I want to tell you uh, some things about her. She has a very impressive background. She actually had her first um, singing debut when she was three years old. Music has been a part of her life forever. And when she was five years old, she started learning the piano. And when she was eight, she started learning the violin. And between these three instruments, and of course the, uh, the voice is an instrument, she became proficient in all of those instruments. She um, received her bachelor's degree and graduate degrees in languages and music, and has been involved with uh, the importance of music in a child's life her entire life. She's taught many different kids um, with different types of challenges, such as learning challenges and physical challenges. She has taught all of these kids how to successfully read music and to play the piano. Um, back in 1994, when she heard about the study and read the study of what was going on at the University of California at Irvine with Dr. Shaw and Dr. Rauscher, she knew that it was important for children to start learning how to play the piano by the age of three. But the challenge was is many preschools, if they were to bring in um, a teacher that would teach them keyboarding or music, that that was an extra expense for the parents. And what she wanted to do is develop something so that um, the parents wouldn't have that extra expense. And so she started working on this app long before the technology was able to catch up with her. And her goals were twofold. Number one, she wanted this to be able to be used in preschools and that the children would not, that they would be able to teach themselves just that the app would take them through the necessary steps. And the second goal was that she wanted parents to be able to use this app at home. And those parents who didn't read music or who didn't have time to sit with their child at the piano bench, that this app would take the child through the steps and the child through the colors and the interaction would be able to learn it themselves. And then the last thing is she wanted to make this affordable. She understands that there are many children usually in a family and there's many children in a preschool and, and uh, piano lessons, music lessons can become prohibitive. So she has successfully done this and she's developed this amazing app that number one is affordable. It's only $1.99 a month. And number two, whether you're a parent who reads music or a parent who doesn't have the time to sit with your, pian your child at the piano bench, your child can still learn to read music and play the piano. So I'm going to turn the time over to Carla. Carla, thank you so much for, uh, for being here. She is in Texas and uh, we're very happy that she's with us here today. And I'm going to turn the time over and you can explain to us about your app. Okay, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction. The first slide that you see will be what you see when you open up the app. And if anybody can play, and I truly believe that anybody can play. Next is the home screen, and you will notice that my icons are gigantic. This is so that one can easily see what they should be touching. And now I'm going to show you some images of some of these little ones. Next. These are children that are in a local preschool, and at the most, they have had the chance to go through a little song three times. This child is a three-year-old who is severely brain damaged at birth. He does not speak. Uh, he is normally very aggressive, but when we brought the app in, he was totally mesmerized. He does not understand matching color to color, but he does understand matching his finger to the key that has something on it. Next, we see another three-year-old, and I, I included this image because it's just a joy to watch the concentration on these children. I mean, this is in the middle of a preschool classroom with all sorts of racket and activity going on, and she never looked away. Next. This is another one, another one who is matching her little pink finger to the key that's got the little pink dot. And all the children, even the three-year-olds, instantly realize that if they have a pink dot on their finger, they need to play on the key that has the pink dot. Uh, I didn't even have to tell them. Next. This is a child who is four, and we talked about star hands because usually children hold their hand in a fist, and then they try to stick out one finger at a time. It does not work very well. 
So I told them, hold your hand in the star, with, with flat out, fingers spread apart, and then just drop down the finger that you need to use. And of course, finger number four, that ring finger is hard to play in the right hand. And so a lot of times other fingers kind of drop down with it. And I told the children that's absolutely fine. And he was doing a wonderful job. And if you notice the little child in standing in line waiting, I think it's a little girl, her turn. She's got her little hand all outstretched in the star position all ready to go. Next. This is another four-year-old. And on the home page, when, when we go from the home page to the levels, I explained to the children that level one just meant that they played with one hand. They could choose either their right hand or they could choose their left hand. But that level two, they had to play the same thing with both hands. And this child said he wanted to play with both hands. So we had to mark both hands. And he actually did play, in this case, he was playing hot cross buns. And we had been seeing it. And so when he got to the one a penny, two a penny, he even played that rhythm correctly. And his preschool teacher was absolutely amazed. She said, just look at that. And she laughed. Next. This is a child pointing to show me. Anybody can play parallels language development. So the fact that I ended up in languages and music was a really good thing. It was, trust me, it was accidental. But in the show me part of the app, they get to see the song played. They get to hear the song played. And the lyrics are also written up in the upper left-hand corner. And so I tell parents and teachers, please, please sing these songs to the children because almost all of them have obvious actions. And if the children know the song, their rate of progress learning it at least doubles. Next. Most of the children knew to choose level one. And here you see level one is green. Level two is kind of a shocking pink and level three is green. And all throughout the app, I keep these same colors for those levels. So the children always know when they're level one, they go for the green. Next. Carla, I have a question. So on the app, everything is color coordinated. So the child goes from level one to level two to level three. Now you pointed out that some of them have some color on their hands. So do those colors on their hands match the keyboard on the screen? The colors on their hands are the same all the time. They're Finger, no, their thumb on their right hand is blue, their pinky on their left hand is blue. And then it goes to the right, the next finger's red, the next finger's green, the next finger's brown, the next finger's pink. So if there is, a, for instance, a pink uh, arrow or a pink note that shows up on a key on the screen, that means they use their pink finger. So the colors on their fingers are to teach them proper fingering. And if we teach them proper fingering, they get good muscle development. And they get, uh, it helps with the memory reflex. OK, all right. So those uh, colors on their fingers match the colors. So they're learning how to place their hands correctly. OK, so and they're reading music at the same time, correctly? Because if they're being able to play a piece of music, then I, Excuse me. I don't have them read right away because when we teach a child to speak or when a child is speaking we don't tell them to be quiet until they can read what they're saying we okay. let the speaking part of their language in place very very well so i actually did not put the notation on the app right at the beginning because i don't want people feeling that they have to teach their child how to read the music first i want gotcha. them to teach them how to play it first Gotcha. Sounds good. Now, and this app has to be used on a regular computer. It cannot be used on a phone, right? Because they have to be able to put it up there and have a keyboard. That's correct. Uh, I debated whether I should make this available for a phone, and I, I chose not to because the keys would be so tiny, it would be hard for the children to see. And if they tried to play it, they'd end up playing with tippy toe fingers. And so it can be played on an Android tablet but it has to be at a certain size. Because if you play on a tablet, you can plug in a MIDI. 
Okay, and so they need it on a regular computer or a laptop, and they need to have a keyboard, obviously. No, they don't. If they have a touch, touch screen, they don't need a keyboard. Okay, interesting. All right, great. Thank you. I just saw a question pop up, and then it went down again. I didn't see it. Oh, I think one of the the one question was about whether they could use it on a phone. So I you you answered that. There was another one that just. Oh, this looks easy. This one. This looks so easy. Yes, go ahead. It says this looks so easy and can apply to many different personality styles. Sometimes it is difficult to teach very timid or very aggressive children, but this looks like the app was made for a wide swath of children as it is equally effective for adults and seniors, or does the program, is the, okay, so is the program best for children, or can older adults that want to learn how to play the piano, can they use it as well? Uh, I, uh, the gray hairs don't lie, I've taught piano lessons for a very, very long time, and I always had very young children because I was targeting that age, but when you're a piano teacher, you get all ages, so I did have a lot of adult students and I always said, I'm going to start you the same way I start the little children. And if you want a quote unquote adult type curriculum, we'll change in about two weeks. Just let me know. And in every case, they said no after two weeks. I like this because somebody who is reading can learn extremely well if you have the type of teaching that is for a non-reading person. But if you're a non-reading person, you can't learn with a reading type curriculum if that makes sense. Yes. So anyway, the, the answer is yes, it works for every age. And adults who do not play the piano and seniors like in uh, old folks homes and that type of thing, this is an absolutely wonderful recreation for them. Oh, I would imagine and I would keep their brains active and working right. well, so go ahead. Okay, I was just saying that these little ones in this preschool always pick one. <laughs> <laughs> from other programs that they were probably a number one level. <laughs> one. Uh, next. Slide. We're waiting. That's the same picture moved over. I just wanted y'all to see that sweet little face. All the children thought they had to smile every time I pointed a camera at them. Next. And you notice this little finger is also heading towards the top of the list. And you can probably see on the left side, there's a, a pointer hand, and that's the left hand. And you see the num uh, you see the colors on the hand. It's the fingers that I have colored. It's not the key. The, the fingers are the, are the color. The keys are just colored so that you know which finger to play. And this particular way of teaching that I do is also considered a vertical curriculum. And when you teach a child how to say mommy or daddy, that child says mommy and daddy a lot. And children like to play songs that they already know. And so if they play a song over and over and over that they know, they'll get increasingly better and better and better. So you don't have to teach them 10 songs that are the same level because they'll keep repeating the first one. So every one in this list adds so there is, I haven't even counted, I think I have about 40 songs. By the time you get to the end of the three, it's probably equivalent to about three years of piano lessons. And he's going to skip. Also notice I have little icons at the beginning of each of those songs. So when the children are non-reading, they can pick the little icon, a little clock on TikTok, a little button. I don't know if you can see it or not. I don't know what the next one is. Oh, again, I just wanted you to see this cute little face. Next. Okay, now this is in the Show Me, and in the Show Me, Busy Buzzy Bumblebee, who has been in my curriculum for probably about 50 years. And every time I do anything at all, I get asked by former students, is Busy Buzzy going to be in it? So Busy Buzzy's in everything. He comes in with a little wand, and he drops dots on the keys so that we know which fingers are going to be played 
and which keys those fingers have to play on. And if you don't want to see this, just touch continue and the screen will immediately disappear. Next. Busy Buzzy's gone a little farther, so you know you're going to play your pink finger. Next. And now you know you're going to play your pink finger and your blue finger on those two keys. But this part, you don't play. You're just watching. Next. Next. Shows. You see the hand up there? The hand has its colored fingers. It's pointing to the pink finger. The arrow is pointing to the key that will be played within a million, you know, very, very soon. And one thing I did want you to notice, too, is I do have the fingering number on those arrows because some of the people using this app will be people that have had lessons before, and they are used to fingering numbers. So I do give them to them. But fingering numbers are extremely confusing to little children because your thumbs are both one. And so the fingering goes in opposite directions on your hands. But our colors go in parallel. Next. Uh, this is also in the show me part. And you see the I am a clock up there. So it's showing the lyrics. So if you're a parent or if you're a preschool teacher, every chance you get, you know, if you're in the grocery store, and your child is getting a little antsy sitting in the grocery cart, and you can start singing, and they'll start kicking and talking with their hands and start behaving for you. I'm the mother of five, can't you tell? <laughs> I don't know what the next one is, so I can't tell you. Um, this is the second note of TikTok. You go down. You use your blue finger and the arrow is pointing to the key that's going to be played. As it plays, the arrow disappears and the little note appears. So you can always tell when the, the note's being played, even on an image like this, because the note, the note will be on there instead of the arrow. Next. Okay, now this little person is touching teach me. And again, notice how big my icons are. When I was, I did all the graphics for this uh, app, and the person that was doing the code for me said, those graphics are, those icons are way, way too big. And he said, no, 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 I want them this way. And after we got all done, he said, those icons are really, really nice. <laughs> Next. Levels are the same. Again, we don't want to confuse any sort of issue, so whenever anything can be the same, I leave it the same. And Busy Fuzzy, of course, is flying in. Next. Now, in the Teach Me, the first thing that shows up is the pointer hand. And this is a partial screen showing the right hand alone. And the blue dot shows up, and then the red adds, and the green, and the brown, they, go, they appear one at a time. If you don't need to be looking at what color the fingers are, you can just hit continue and the screen will disappear. The screen also freezes because in many cases, you need to use a washable marker and put a little dot on your child's hand. I know the children in the preschool all wanted dots even if they knew which finger was which. Next. The next screen is showing two hands. Now on the real computer screen, you'll see the whole hands. And you notice that the blue finger is the finger to the left. So most people say teaching a beginning pianist to play in parallel is very diff difficult because the fingering is different because you're playing one with five, two with four, three with three, four with two. I mean, I said you don't have to do that. Tell them to play their blue fingers together or their red fingers together. And when you have a left-handed child and they learn a song with their left hand, and you can say, okay, now have your left hand teach your right hand how to do this. And when your left hand has green finger down, you know, that knows, then your right hand will know it's green finger supposed to be down. And so all my students from practically day one could play in parallel. Wow. Carla, I have a question. So you're talking about that you can either use um, 
like a magic marker to put the colored dot on their fingers? Or can you use a sticker? You can use a sticker. Sometimes the children don't like sticky things on their fingers. Okay, all right, that makes That's, sense. And one time I tried to tie little bows with yarn around their fingers and they immediately jerked them off. They didn't like that either. They liked the magic marker. Okay. okay, there could be some sensory issues with some, so thank you. Right. So, you know, whatever, whatever works is fine. I've even thought of having gloves <laughs> dyed each face <laughs> different color. Oh, that would be clever. <laughs> Just hard to play. <laughs> right. Next. Uh, okay. I don't see all of this, but this is still in the teach me part. And Busy Buzzy flies in and puts the dots on the keys in the colors of the finger that's going to play on those keys. So the child, the child sees those colored dots on the screen, but their their actual keyboard does not have dots on them, correct? If they're using a plug-in keyboard, no. It'll okay. Be All right. So they'll be on the screen, the computer screen, just not on their on their plug-in keyboard. I was told by someone once. Well, it's really easy to have kids just, you know, match color to color. You know, but that's not doing very much. And I told that to a preschool director. And she said, that's how they learn. That's how they learn to put their shoes on, how their socks, how they learn to eat. And she went on and on and on, actual firing. But I know what this person was talking about, because when a child is at the point where they're just matching red to red, blue to blue, many times they're not seeing the pattern. And so I do have a lot of little games and activities that are on my website that you can do if you want to. Ultimately, they'll see the pattern if you want to kind of trigger this at this point. Um, I didn't put it in the images. I'm going to hold it up in front of my face. See this little piece? That's something that's just a cutout. And I put two dots on it. And what I do is I have the children have a blank one. And I say, put the dots on it. So that way they start seeing the pattern of the two black keys and three black keys and the white keys in between. And I also have little things you can cut out, three black keys, two black keys, and you can line them up. And I also have, this comes from reading all the Montessori books, a place to put the dots when you're done. It's amazing. Children, when I let them put dots on the keyboard, to match the dots on the screen, which we do at the beginning, to kind of answer your question. These are removable dots. And so this is laminated. And when they have to change the dots for a different song, they can put the dots on here and then start with it. Perfect. Thank you. Next. I'll that for a long explanation. Next. <clears throat> uh, this is a contrary song. Oh, that one that was just on probably had a lot of dots. That was probably Jingle Bells in Contrary Motion. This is Jingle Bells, and you notice there's a green arrow with the green triangle arrow pointing to the green right finger, and the pink left finger is playing the pink one. The arrows are slightly different, the right arrows versus the left arrows, if you notice. And then across the top, you see that the numbers 1 through 10. I took every song and divided them, not necessarily measure by measure or anything, but part by part. Because if you're trying to learn jingle bells with the melody in the right hand, it's something totally different in the left hand. You don't go from the beginning to the end over and over. You want to do a little part over and over. So this way, if they touch that, little repeat sign way on the right side that's kind of grayed over at that point. If you touch that, that turns bright green and it'll play the little part over and over and over and over again. So they can practice anything they want and the computer is endlessly patient. We'll play it a billion times if you want. Next. Carla, how young do you usually suggest that a child, when they're going to start with this app, how young should they be? Or how, what is the youngest age that they should be? I have started 
students at two and a half, but I say their speaking ability has to be good. If they're speaking really well, and that's usually by about age three. But on my website again, I do have things that parents can do to prepare their child if they feel they're a little bit too young. And one of them is singing the songs, moving with it, and doing that sort of thing. Um, I started one of my children at two and a half, and well, she's a concert pianist now, but she's five foot eleven. She has a ten note span on the piano, and she's a triathlete. She's extremely tall, extremely athletic, and so she just has that piano mastered. It. It's really fun to see it. And she said she has no memory of not playing the piano. Oh my goodness! She calls her piano her baby. And every one that I started young continued much longer than the students who started older. And in almost every case, all the ones that I know of, they've all turned into doctors and lawyers and accountants. They've been very, very successful people. But they play in symphonies. They keep playing the piano. They play for church. They, they've never stopped the music end of their life. I think it gets into your blood, and I think you want to keep it with you forever. That's that's an excellent. Those are excellent examples. Thank you. I know I I worked in a federal office building for a while. I thought I'd check that out. It didn't last very long. But when I decided to quit, everybody in the office said, "Oh, we're going to miss your singing." I said, "What?" And they said, "You're better than you then." And I said, "What are you talking about?" And they said, "Don't you know that you sing all day long?" And I said, I didn't know that. Why didn't you say something? And he said, that was in season. So we heard all the Christmas songs, all the summer songs, all the stuff we were singing all the time. And I was so embarrassed. <laughs> That's so wonderful. Doing that. So uh, it does get into your skin, I guess, or into your brain. But this is this same child. Like I said, he was four years old and he wanted to play level two. And level two is playing in parallel. So you see he's using two green fingers at the same time. And you notice we put dots on the keys, but those are sticky dots. Those, okay. are, not, those are not lights on the keys. And I think the next one shows him putting the dots on. The next one, thing, you know, see him? He's taking a dot and sticking it on the key. And he's matching it so that it looks the same as the keys that are on the screen. Now, if you don't want the dots on the screen, you can turn them off. You can turn the arrows off. You can turn the dots off. You can turn the off. You can have a completely blank keyboard up there so that you can see if you know the song by memory. And if you make a mistake, the arrow will just show up and bounce up and down to show you how you should have played this key. And another thing I do is if a controller is hooked up, the sound goes through the computer. And if a MIDI keyboard's hooked up, I suggest you turn the sound off so you just get the computer sound. Because then if the child is seeing a note and playing an incorrect note, the child does not hear anything. And I have found out from teaching very young children that they develop at least relative perfect pitch. So I don't ever want them to see a note and hear the wrong pitch. Excellent. Okay, thank you. Next. Here's another little one. See the little red dot on her finger? And she's also been told about star fingers. So we don't worry about curved fingers at this time, but I do like them to keep their hand wide open so that they use each finger. Next. This, oops. Can we go back one? Yeah. This is what they usually do. See the little fist? And uh, that works okay when it's your pointer finger, but it doesn't work very well for the other one. Next. Children are very careful to use the correct finger. If you tell them, you know, make sure when it's pink, just use your pink finger. Make sure when it's blue, you should be using your blue finger. And see, um, when she's using a controller there, so the dots are on all the keys that she'll be using. So she has to look up on the screen to know which key she should be playing and which finger she should be using. So she's four years old. She's studying her hand, trying to find the correct finger. Next. 
She found it. It's pink. And look at that little finger is even curved. And I saw that. I was really touched. But you see there her concentration as well. And you see all the little kids in the background. I mean, the teacher's reading stories for her. And she's just completely into the app. Next. Next. Good. Okay, this is kind of a blurry picture, but it's cute because these are two four-year-olds. And that little boy was having a little bit of difficulty, so Miss Helper jumped in. That's so helpful. I had to tell her to back off a little bit, give them a little time to find it before you show them where it is. Next. This little helper was just giving verbal help. But you notice this child is playing. He's using his finger with the red dot on the key that has the red dot. So that is, that is not an issue, and it teaches them all sorts of proper fingering. It's really an easy way to let them learn. Next. Here you see him touching that icon at the end. Because now that second part will just repeat over and over and over again. Next. Uh, this is probably level two because both green fingers are being played. And you can see the green arrow there. They have to play both keys properly. If they don't, the arrows just bounce up and down. And again, like I said, if they play an incorrect key, there will be no sound. Next. And the computer always remembers. We don't always remember, but the computer always does. And one little girl, when it popped up one of the good job screens, she said she raised her arm, uh, her hand above her head and screamed, "I won!" <laughs> they like, to, you know, they like seeing that good job. They always smile when the screen comes up. I think that's it. Carly, you've obviously worked with a lot of children in preschools, and I just wanted to tell the people who are watching this, when Dr. Uh, Shaw did his preliminary work, after they found that Mozart could make you smarter, they went into preschools because the cortex of the brain is developing very rapidly between the ages of three and seven. And so they went in just once a week and gave the, the children just like a 10 minute lesson on the keyboard. And within an eight-month period, they increased their spatial intelligence by 46%, which is um, pretty amazing uh, because spatial intelligence is so important in terms of math and science. Sorry about the phone. We forgot to turn it off. But um, anyway, what you're doing is absolutely incredible. It's important. It's, uh, this sounds like an amazing app. I have one question. Tell me... Um, <clears throat> When you, they get to level three, what are they doing? What are they involved with? How come? It's different with the left hand, and we call that contrary motion. And when you're hearing Mozart, where you're going da 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 da, that type of thing in the left hand, they're doing that at that level. Okay, and, all right. Uh, they're playing fairly complicated music, but again, the list of music for level one, level two, level three, the, name, the list is identical. So at the beginning, you learn how to play the melody, and then you learn the melody with the left hand and the right hand separately. Level two, you, will, you learn how to do it at the same time. Level three is quite difficult in many ways, but you already know the melody. So again, it pushes the learning rate up. And so they're not having to learn all sorts of new things, just some new things. Got it. It sounds fabulous. Um, I think you've answered all the questions that have come in. I appreciate your time, your expertise, your knowledge. It's been fabulous. And uh, one thing, we get airplanes. They're military planes that go over our house. Unless they do, they knock out the sound. So that's frustrating. So I apologize for that. But thank you again. And thank you for those uh, questions from our audience. And thank you for those people who have tuned in today. We appreciate you. And uh, have a, a great Friday and a great weekend. Thank you, Carla. Thank you.